Hello and welcome to Q. My name is Cobalt. Um, I'm here to introduce you to the game, teach you the basics, and help you get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do pretty much anytime you load up the game, where it says 4 hours 55 minutes, just off to the middle left there, that is your daily wheel. It'll give you coins and a free card every 8 hours. You do want to hit that as much as you can just because that gives you free stuff that'll help improve your game. Um, now, a lot of people often ask what packs to buy. Uh, in this sort of situation, there's a lot of options. The best value for coin is these 2500 packs. They also come with an opportunity for limited cards. So get those if you can. Otherwise, the Marvelous Miscellany which is always going to be there, is very good value for coin. Uh, as for gems, that's entirely up to you. What do you want? Do you want a fusion card? Do you want a daily limited card? There's a lot of options. Um, these daily limited cards here, they've been great so far. So definitely if they're there, check them out. Otherwise, again, limited cards here. Now, we're going to run you through a game just quickly this is using a deck that i've currently got uh, that i think is one of the stronger decks in the format so this is kind of an idealistic deck you won't have access to all these cards just yet but this is kind of going to showcase all the things that the game that help you win the game um so we will we'll try and find an opponent generally the queue times aren't so bad i do have a bit of an issue with finding it. Now, luckily here, I do have these cards that I can use as a pointer. So I can point to things. So we have, over here we have our um, energy, and then our power. So if I was to put this card down, energy goes down, power goes up. If I bring it back, that swaps. Uh, up here is your opponent's name, what round you're in. So each map, each round is a different map. Uh, different arena has different buffs. And my opponent is a newbie. As you can see, they have no XP, which means they are, in fact, a bot. I'm getting run out of time, so I may as well play my cards. Now, what I've done here is say, uh, I've played the Brontosaurus. Um, we'll come back to that later. But generally, to start with, you want everything to increase your energy per turn as much as you can. You want to gain energy. Power is good, but if you have energy, you can pay for all these cards. Um, so cards that increase your energy, such as Husky, is going to increase my energy by one per turn. But it's not good to play it here. We're going to play Jupiter. Now, there's no other energy cards in here to play. We're going to play Bald Eagle, just so I can put that back in my deck. It's a really strong effect, and I do want to see it later. <coughs> this bar off to the right shows you how much you are winning or losing the round by. It's very important to keep track of. Um, here... At this point, because my opponent is an AI, I'm pretty sure I can win without playing a card. But I do want that deck. You want to play as many cards per turn as you can. Um, except for cir certain circumstances where you are saving a card. Uh, the reason you want to play as many cards as you can is just to constantly cycle your deck. So the more cards you're playing, the more cards you're drawing, the more cards you're drawing, the quicker you see your good cards again. So definitely try to play as many cards as you can. Now you've only got to win three rounds to win a, um, a game. So it's fine if you do drop some. But if you are just in a hurry, you can always just play your three rounds and get it over and done with you real quickly. So Husky here has increased my energy per turn. So that's why I've played it here. Because now I'm getting eight energy per turn. Now if I play this, that'll put me to nine energy per turn. Um... Generally, once you've hit an energy per turn that you're sort of happy with, um, obviously seven isn't enough for certain strong cards. Um, so you want to hit an energy per turn that you are happy with, just so that you don't need to worry about not having enough energy to play three cards every turn, which at this point I don't. Um, I have a lot of expensive cards in the deck. That's why I have things like Axolotl. So Axolotl here puts more energy in my hand after I play it, and a lot of my cards put energy in give me energy for drawing them. So, gaining energy is very important. Things that gain energy are probably your best assets. And then the strong cards come after. 
Um, at this point, sun isn't very valuable to me just because, yes, it gives me two energy per turn, but there's only two turns left before I win the game, or three turns left. <coughs> Sorry. At most, I'm only going to get four energy out of it. It's not worth it right now. We will play Earth. We'll play the Husky. We'll play this. So you'll see earlier I played uh, Brachiosaurus. I should be getting it roughly this turn. Um, and that's because I've been playing not enough cards. But I should get it here. There we go. There's that Brachiosaurus and there's the Wind Power. And you'll see I've got 19 energy now. So I can do a lot with this. So I'm going to play all my strongest cards here. Um, oops, I ran out of energy. But, so this is just generally how a game goes. Um, many opponents you do find in-game will be bots. Um, such as my lovely opponent here, So Longfish. Um, so don't feel like you're bullying anyone if you're doing well. Don't feel like you need to make the game exciting or anything. A lot of the time there's a bot. You'll see their XP up in the top right if it isn't. <coughs> um, you can have people as friends, you can add bots as friends, not really much point to it, they do not accept trade offers. Uh, you've got daily challenges, they're not a big deal, just play the game and they'll fix up. Like they'll just complete themselves just by playing the game. Uh, what did I have next? Now you will need some tools, I recommend some tools, you don't need them. Uh, a calculator is really good for determining just how good your card is. So if we go into the cards here, let's just grab a random card. Um, what looks interesting. So we've got the humpback whale. So it's a 760. So we're going to go 60 divided by 7. You're getting 8 power per energy that you spent on that card. However, it does actually give you 3 energy after you play it. So it's technically a 4. So we go 70 divided by 4. It's giving you 17 point. Oops, that's... See, maths is hard when you use the wrong numbers. Divide by four. 15 energy per... 15 power per energy. And then you've got some cards that just don't give out that much. Um, Chinstrap Penguin, for example, doesn't have an effect. And it's, you know, 52 divided by eight. It's only giving 6.5. So therefore, you can see that Humpback Whale is exceptionally better than Chinstrap. Chinstrap Penguin. Talking is difficult, just like maths. <coughs> um, now there are fusion cards which these things are the stronger cards in the game so we have a few Zeus, Humpback all the way through here until I think fusion power, fusion power is the last one on the list I don't believe I'm missing any right now um, so fusion cards are really strong but they're very hard to make let's take Dark Matter as an example in this case you need 17 of Sombrero Galaxy, 16 Eskimo Nebula, Nebula, and 18 Beetlejuice. Um, <coughs> so because you need so many cards for it, it is very hard to get. So you've just got to keep grinding opening packs to try and get these cards until you're finally able to get that Dark Matter. Um, and that's for every fusion. Some fusions don't take many cards, so in this case, 17, 1, and 6, that's not too bad. Um, but do be aware that it's hard to get fusion materials because everyone wants them. So trading for them is very difficult. Um, to trade for fusion materials, you want base camp. Um, have I mentioned packs? I believe I've already gone through packs. But just in case I haven't, you definitely want cool cats. Or in, this, in any case, you want the $2,500 uh, coin pack. That is your best value pack. Uh, it has a chance at limited cards. That's not important as much as just getting cards. It has a chip. <coughs> it, <coughs> it gives you access to fusion materials um, and it's the best value for cards. If there isn't a 2500 coin pack, get the Marvelous Miss Looney. That does almost as well. Uh, and then if you're happy to spend gems, spend gems on your limited cards. Don't spend gems on things like seabirds. Um, just because you can get everything in Seabirds from other packs most of the time. Um, things like the Cool Cats pack is good for limited cards um, purely because you're guaranteed a limited card. Buying a fusion is also okay. Definitely feel free to do that. Those cards are good and it saves you a big grind. 
uh, other limited packs are also really, really good. But, you know, that's only if you are using coins. So when building a deck, let's just go through here. You want to go for cards that give energy first. Humpback Whale gives energy. Uh, Golden Retriever, The Sun, Axolotl. This technically gives energy by making other things cost less. So those are cards you want to aim for. Earth gives energy. Wind Power gives energy. And Husky, Jupiter, Brachiosaurus, no, Brontosaurus. Okay, so these are all your energy giving cards. You generally want to slap a heap of those in. Make that about half your deck is cards that give you energy. So that way you can put in your big powerhouse cards like Veil Nebula, Thorizonosaurus, Apollo 11. You know, just your things that have got really high power and cost, but still a good power to cost ratio. You know, so a 970 that takes 30 off your opponent's cards, 645 gives 30 to your cards. Calculate it all as one thing, and yeah, you'll find that a lot of these cards are just fantastic to have. Um, every deck has 18 cards. Unfortunately, you can't manipulate that to be any less uh, anymore. There was a glitch for it, but that is gone now. Leveling up is the best way, is probably one of the best ways to get coins. Um, so do level up as much as you can. Leveling up is just through getting cards, in, which gives you XP, or playing games to get XP. Each time you level up, you will get a pack and increasingly more gems, not gems, coins. Now, the last thing to look at here is base camp. Base camp is a rough place. So here you can see people are wanting cards or people are offering cards. Or you can find what your friends are doing. Oh, no, it looks like people are looking for friends. Interesting. <coughs> so here people are offering cards. This is the harder part to trade with because people aren't saying what they want. You don't know what you want to give them, but you can go through and find a card that you're after. Here you can find people are wanting a card and they're willing to give up a lot for it. So in the case of this guy, he has a giant barracuda. Um, now, what do I want in exchange for his giant barracuda? Well, personally, I like fusion materials because I want to make as many fusions as I can. He seems to have a few excess phoenixes here because it does say he has four. I'm going to see if he's willing to give one up for a barracuda. And in a fair amount of time, it'll come back with the trade. You know, in this case, I've made a trade here. Just telling you how you've done. Now, if you want a card, you just go in here, you scroll through. These are cards you don't own yet, and then these are cards you do own. Um, so we're going to go through here. I still would like some phoenixes, so I'm going to ask for phoenixes. And people will send me trade offers as they go. Uh, if I am sick of getting trade offers for that card, I can remove it. Uh, every five minutes, you can put a card up in base camp. So that should cover all of the basics. Um, if you ever do need more information, Discord is fantastic for finding people or QBuddy. Message me anytime. Um, I have the link for it. A few other people will have the link for it. This has information on every card in the game and a lot of it. So we're trying to update it as often as possible. Um, this will give you everything, even down to how much power per energy that card puts out, which is fantastic and extremely useful, um, just because, you know, you don't want to accidentally get something that's only got a 4.2, when you can have a 7.4. <coughs> so look at that, I've already got a trade offer here. Shouldn't be going through my apps like that. Trade offer here, so someone is offering. Unfortunately, you do get some ridiculous trades. This is a ridiculous trade. I've asked for a Phoenix. He's trying to tack on extra cards and ask for something that's worth way more than that Phoenix. So I can counter that by just saying, I don't want these. Uh, and I'm not willing to give up this. But he can have this. He doesn't have one. He can have a Cassiopeia because he doesn't have one. Let's be nice, he's given two cards, so we'll make it a deal in his favour. 
he's getting two cards, I'm getting one. But we'll see if he accepts that. So trading, there's a lot of back and forth. You can reject if you think someone's ridiculous. There are some people that only make bad trades. Um, Shoal is one of them. He only makes bad trades. Um, there are a couple of others that are very known for it. Um, I think one in particular is the most known for it, and he just doesn't have one up here. Rand is really bad for it. Um, Charles. Charles is one of the worst people to try and trade with, just because he always asks for way more than the card is valued. So do be very cautious. If you're ever unsure, ask people in Discord. Um, they will always let you know, you know, if something is a good trade or not. So have fun, guys. Happy queuing. Um, and hopefully I see you somewhere in the game.